Hey guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to my PGBL draft analysis. I'm hoping this is up before my week one game. Uh, my week one game goes live in five hours, so I need to get this done quite quick. Um, I won't make this too long because I know draft analysis videos that go on are boring. Well, they are to me at least. Um, but you guys get to see my whole squad and uh, get a tiny bit of analysis as to why I picked what I did pick. Um, so yeah, to give you some information about the draft, um, it's uh, 11 mons, you need 11 mons, it's a tier based draft, so it was 1 tier 1, 1 tier 2, 2 tier 3s, 2 tier 4s, tier 5, 4 free picks. I believe that's how it, I, I think that's how it worked. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. But. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like limited as to a lot of the good things you can get, but I still felt like I managed to get quite a few of the good bargains. Um, because of the tier drafting system, some of the picks might seem like a bit of a weird order, um, but I'll explain to why I've picked what I have in this order. Um, so yeah, let's just not faff about. I was 7th in the draft order, I believe, so I was going to get a decent-ish first pick. Um, I think one of the two things that I wanted to use were left. I wanted Tapu Koko. I always want Tapu Koko, but that went literally first pick. Um, it's such a good one in draft format. Um, so, I think at this point, when it came to me, there was still Zygarde 50% and Kyra and Black. But uh, my good friend Bub, King Bub, um, is also in this league, and we're going to try and take it down together. Unfortunately, we have been put together as rivals. There's like this rival thing which is going on. Basically, it means you play each other twice. And it's really frustrating because Bub is the only person in this league I've ever played before. And, uh, of course, Dodd's Law means I have to play him twice. So, annoying, but you never know. But, yeah, we're going to try and take this on together. Uh, if he wins the league, I'll be happy. I'd be very happy with that. Obviously, we'll go for it ourselves. But, um, yeah, me and Bub are kind of working together-ish on some draft ideas. So... He wanted Zygarde, so I let him have Zygarde, um, and I wanted to try Kyra and Black, because I have never used Kyra and Black before in my life. I could go horribly wrong. We'll see, I guess. Um, I don't think I really need to say too much about Kyra and Black. Like, people know what it does. It just murders things, and it's got Terrible, which is effectively Mold Breaker, so abilities aren't saving anyone here. You know, Levitate is often a fantastic ability for stopping ground types, but... Terravolt Earth Power, sure, why not? Uh, stab Ice Beam, obviously it does lack that strong physical uh, attack. I didn't make Chiron Black one of my Z move users, I'll uh, tell you my Z move users as I go along. We got two. Um, I believe uh, it had to work out as like the combined was tier 6, so if I took a tier 1 Mon, which obviously Chiron Black is, I'd have had to make my tier 5 a Z user. So I worked out something else. Uh, I did something else with Z moves in the end. So I'm not going to go for like um, the Sub Zero Slammer. But Ice Beam's still going to do it loads because it's got 120 special attack. Like its physical attack is higher than its special attack when it's fully invested. So you don't even need investment. If you want to go balls to the wall, don't need an ice type attack, then you know, just max attack this thing with fusion bolt and outrage and there's not many switchings at all with 170 attack speed 95 so it's pretty good for a scarfer um obviously it does get roost as well so you can run it bulky i know ice types aren't normally bulky but then there is a dragon type to make that up kind of um it's 125 hp 100 defense no special defense with roost this thing can live it can be bulky obviously it's better known for its offense but because it's so bulky, you don't have to like invest in its attack whatsoever, and it still hits like a truck. It's nuts. So I'm really excited to use this thing because obviously dragons are everywhere, and um, uh, so are fairies. But this thing gets the coverage to to beat them all. Obviously, it's a bit slower than normal, um, but I've got some faster things which can help the team and, and should be able to help Kyrim really. So that's Kyrim. I'm not going to go over its move pool. Everyone knows what its good moves are by this point. It's been around long enough. So yeah, that's a. Uh, Kyron Black as our first pick. Then second pick, it might seem a bit weird, but we did go in with the Florges. The reason we went for Florges uh, is because the fairies started to go pretty quick, and I decided that we'd quite like a fairy. Um, this might make my next pick look a bit stupid, because um, I didn't realise it was even there. I didn't even realise it had been allowed, but we'll go over that anyway. Um, so I went Florges because, one, it's a wish passer. It helps with Defog, obviously, with Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. It works pretty well with Kyron, basically. Um, other than steel types, obviously, but we'll have things to do with steel types later on. Do not worry. Um, 
But I mean, like, Floor Just Removal isn't the best defensively, but you know, it's got all the support you need. Heal Bell, Wish, it's got Synthesis, uh, Defog, like I said. Um, it hits quite hard as well. It's a pretty decent Calm Mind user because you can run max defense on this thing. You don't even need to run Special Bulk on it because it's that bulky. Um, but it partners my next um, main sort of wall for the team really well as well, which we'll go over shortly. Um, so it just kind of fit in with my plan really nice. And it was this or Sylveon. Um, I think Sylveon was taken just before. But I've used Floor just before. I'm happy I can use it. I, I quite like it. People tell me it's rubbish, but I, I don't care because I enjoy using it and, and, and can use it. So yeah, that's fine. Floor just is here. So second team member. I don't think I really need to say anything else because it's quite obvious what it does. Next pick. Now, this isn't something I really expected to come into the league and get to use. Mainly because I didn't even realise it was there until um, my Mega was sniped. I can't remember what Mega it was I was going to go for. Oh, Mega Aggron. Um, but Mega Aggron went tier 3. Um, as it does, apparently. So, uh, because that would give me 60 extra points as well for my points draft at the end. But obviously, someone else had the same idea. But then I was like, oh, hey, there's another Steel type. Um... We, we drafted Mega Morwile, like, that's nuts. We've got Kyra and Black and Mega Morwile on the same team. Um, there's, there's like, no switch into this mon, like, in existence, because if it resists Fairy, chances are it dies to Iron Head. If it's still type, get Fire, Pun uh, Fire Fang. It's not going to kill, but it's going to do a hell of a lot of damage. It gets Knock Off, it gets Sucker Punch, it's got Stealth Rocks. So I've now got Stealth Rocks and Defog in here already. Um, like, yeah, it's not fast, but I do have Mons in this team, which can set up Trick Room. Um, so it can become a very scary, uh, just sort of a wall breaker, a very scary sweeper in the Trick Room. Um, it's a good lead. I've, I've realized, sort of, in team building, because I've played week one, I've, I'm going to be playing week two shortly. It tends to match up pretty well as a lead, because it's typing. Um, and it's bulk, like 125 defense and 95 special defense. You don't have to invest in them um, to, to have some decent bulk in this thing. Like, because it's so slow, you don't normally run speed on it. You want to run HP, and it can take hits, and then just kill something. Like... If you come across it, I mean, lots of, like, really bulky walls are slow anyway. Thinking, like, your Toxapexes, um, your Tangrofs, things like that. They they can't switch into this thing. It sounds weird because it's a uh, Steel Fairy type, but Toxapex dies to, like, two Thunder Punches if I get a prediction, for example. Um, so this thing's really scary, and I'm really excited to use it. And I've got two extremely solid Trick Room users on my draft, um, which you will see... Um, hopefully at some point during the season. We've got 11, 11 games throughout the season, so yeah, there's a good chance Trick Room will come at some point. But yeah, I'm just incredibly excited to use this thing. It's like it's been banned from leagues for ages for a reason. It's Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon kind of, I say kind of, made it more balanced. It didn't really. I still think it's borderline ban worthy, but I'm happy. I've got this in Chiron Black, like people are going to have an incredibly hard time switching into that attacking core already. And some of my other attackers later on aren't anywhere near as strong, but they're sort of a bit faster, so it could be like late game sweepers type thing. So I've got incredibly strong offense in the first three uh, picks, which is really nice. And this is why I said floor just might look a bit weird, because I didn't think about Mega Morwell at any point, but I now have two fairies. And actually from the NESTL, uh, where I had Robombi and Mega Altaria. Two fairies isn't actually that much of an issue if you have a good team around it. I'd sell a Steeler, so I covered its weaknesses pretty well, or their weaknesses pretty well. Um, but yeah, like, I I'm just so... Like, I thought I was excited to try Kyron Black. I was even more excited to try Mega Morwile. So, um, next up we have got the classic Porygon 2. Um, we've seen so far, I've got two very good knockoff switch-ins in Florgeous, and one of the best in Mega Morwile. Um, or even regular more well because it does get intimidate. Um, so I have got knockoff switchings. That's probably the, like, the main thing about this. Again, toxic switchings as well. If you're trying to toxic this thing, I got a free switch into my Mega Wall while. Uh, more while, I can't speak. Um, but I mean, Por Porygon 2, everyone knows, is solid. You see it in VGC. It's king of VGC. It's very good in draft format. It's used in Smogun, I believe. I think it's UU, maybe. Like, 
The only thing this can do, or to do, right, that right, right, really dies to, is like strong fighting types, and I have got ways of dealing with those later in the draft, and I have got the Florges at the moment. Yes, I know Florges isn't the most bulky defensively, but it takes hits pretty well because fairy typing is great. Um, we know what P2 does, it gets recover, um, it gets all those annoying moves like Thunder Wave, Toxic. It's a normal type, so its move is incredible. Bolt Beam, Tri Attack, Shadow Ball, Psychic. Um, and then its abilities, like all three, are extremely viable. Trace, if my opponent's got Pokemon which have incredible abilities, then Trace is an option. Download to give it a bit of attacking strength. Um, three plus one in physical attack or special attack. And this thing is obviously normally specially attacking, but you can run physical. 80 attack isn't anything to laugh at, especially when you get a stab return. Um, it's like 102 base power with no drawbacks whatsoever. Um, and I gen my mons, so happiness isn't going to be an issue. Um, and then this is one of my two trick room setters, which you'll see the other one later on. Very good trick room setter itself because it can use it. It's not fast, but it's not slow. Um, but you can IV it, you know, to be super slow and then just, just damage things, um, especially with things like download. If you don't want to be, uh, if you don't want to run Trick Room, I forgot to mention Fed Ability, Analytic. Your opponent switches on this thing, like, it's going to take an extra, like, I think damage increased by 30%, which is a lot. That could be like an extra 10, 15% of damage. Um, and with Hazards, that, that could be the difference between getting it in KO range or actually just flat out KOing it. KOing it. P2 is just incredible. I've I've used it in a league once, and that was a long time. I think that was at the start of Sun and Moon, so I'm really looking forward to actually using this thing in conjunction with the other ones I've got so far and what I've got coming up. Um, the reason why I took P2 tier uh, round 4 uh, is actually because it's a tier 3 mon, which, while talking to Bub, we were both like, that's incredibly cheap for Porygon 2. Um, so I took it quickly because it works with Floor just well, and while there's a lot of things in tier 3, um, I wanted the bulk so I could just focus on the offense because I think lower tier offense can do well better than lower tier bulk. That's my personal opinion. Um, anyway, uh, round five pick. I don't know how this thing lasts until round five because I've used it in one league myself and I think I got like nine kills in the first three weeks with it. Um, it doesn't, you know, on paper it doesn't look the strongest, but then when it comes to game time, you're like, yo, this thing just kills this whole team. And that is, of course, Greninja. Um, I wanted to draft this thing mainly because I wanted a water type. Fair enough, and a dark type. Obviously, it's not the bulkiest thing, but this does now give me Stealth Rocks and more while spikes and toxic spikes on my Greninja. Um, obviously, it's not protein. That would just not be fair to my opponents. Protein Greninja with Mega Mawile and Kyra and Black would actually be hilariously fun for me to use. Um, but we all know Greninja's move pool is, is just ridiculous. 103 special attack, 95 attack, 122 speed. And then 72, 67, 71 bulk. You're never going to bring a defensive Greninja, but it lets it live a hit into, and you know sometimes that's what it needs to do. Um, Greninja is also one of my Z move users um, to abuse its gross move pool. Um, obviously, it gets like Gunk Shot, Extra Sensory Surf, Dark Pulse, U-Turn, Low Kick, Ice Beam, um, probably some other weird moves as well. Rock Slide. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it gets Power Up Punch. It gets like. This thing is just nuts. I, I love it. I love Greninja. It's my favorite Pokemon. Um, so I'm really looking forward to actually using this thing again. Um, and it will work really well with Kyrim and Morwell because once they've broken the walls, like Greninja struggles, I say, against fighting types. It does get extra sensory, like I said, but Morwell should be able to help with that. Um, it might struggle against some grass types. I'm not wearing Ice Beam. Again, Kyrim helps with that. And once things are, like, the faster things are dead, because faster things ain't taking hits from Mawile or Kyra and Black, like, faster offensive mons. Once the bulkier things are gone, Greninja can clean up late game. Oh, Water Shuriken as well. Obviously, that got a lovely buff in Generation 7. So that's something to uh, consider as well. It does get Shadow Sneak and Water Shuriken as uh, priority. So, got a bit of priority, actually, on Mawile and this so far. We've got all the hazards now. Obviously, I want more hazards. Um... We've got some speed going on because they didn't have much speed before, but again, we've got the trick room option. So the team's taking really nice shape so far. Um, and obviously, I want to take this because I I figured someone would want Greninja. Like, people overlooked Torrent Greninja for a while, then realized actually, you know, yes, protein makes it absolutely busted, but it's definitely more better than good um, with Torrent. So that's fine. <laughs> Next pick, guys. I don't actually know. I think I've drafted it in the PPL before. 
possibly. But um, I have, in fact, drafted myself the Don Fan. Um, round six, I figured, you know, having Rapid Spin would be quite nice because so far I've only got Defog on Florgis. Unless Kyron gets it as well, it might do. Um, but I realised as well, you know, if I want to run, say, Hazard Stack one week, I've got Stealth Rock, I've got Spikes, I've got Toxic Spikes. Having Rapid Spin might be more beneficial than running Defog on my Florgis. Um, plus, I want a ground type because, you know, having an electric immunity is nice. I don't want a team to run through me with Volt Switch. Um, like, none of my things here are, like, super weak to it. But, you know, the momentum's nice. So, Don Fan deals with U-Turn and Volt Switch very well. It's more priority and Ice Shard. It's also got a ridiculously strong Earthquake, like 120 attack. Don Fan is obviously normally something you'd expect to see more as a defensive mod. Um, but it can be run offensively. It gets Rock Polish. Um, it gets a great move pool. Again, Gunk Shot, Seed Bomb, Earthquake, Ice Shard, Stone Edge, Knock Off. Like, even if that is it, that's all it needs. Like, it's really good coverage. Um, but again, it's some bulk, if, if I fancy bringing it. Um, I think it'll probably be something that's a bit more situational for me. But it's an option, and it's me. So, um... Not really much else I need to say about Don Fan, I don't think, really. So, um, that's the first lot done. Uh, you probably just saw the rest of my draft. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong one. There we go. Right, so next up in the draft, you've seen it all now, but never mind. Um, we have got Salazzle. Now, Salazzle's an interesting one. Um, I know I've got Gunk Shot on, like, two of my mons so far, but an actual Poison type will be quite nice. I know I have more while to deal with fairy types, but um, Kyrim is weak to fairy and steel. Salazzle beats fairy and steel very nicely. Um, and its ability in corrosion, I think is gonna be a dark horse. It's gonna be incredibly useful. I think people will forget about it. Um, especially in, I look at some teams and I'm like, you, you know what? S Salazzle is the freest toxic in the whole game. Like. It poisons steel types, it poisons uh, poison types, and because it's a poison type, Toxic can't miss. Um, Flamethrower and Sludge Wave, obviously its move pool isn't that great otherwise, but it does get some really interesting moves. It gets Dragon Pulse, Dragon Tail, um, Fake Out, Encore, Fast Taunt, which is something else Greninja as well, so I've got two Fast Taunt users. Um, I think it gets Toxic Spikes, maybe, let's just double check. If not, it doesn't matter because I have Greninja. Uh, it doesn't, but um, again, it's a grounded poison type, so that gets rid of toxic spikes for me, which can be uh, annoying to my team, that's for sure. Um, I mean, it's got, it's got loads of weird physical moves as well. Foul play is quite interesting to run on it because its attack stat is incredibly low. Um, it's obviously not the bulkiest, but again, it's a bit of speed. It's a nice speed tier um, as it outspeeds those 115s and 110s. Greninja will be 122, so outspeeds 120s and 115s as well. Um, I need a bit of speed on my team, I think, anyway. Uh, and while this thing on paper might not look the strongest, it does also get nasty plot. Um, so if I get to plus two with a life orb on this thing and you haven't got a fire switch in, it could pretty much be GG because the speed of this thing as well is incredibly nice. Um, it does get flame. I'm just looking at the other moves now. Flame charge to increase its speed if you really want to do that. Disable because apparently, why not? Um, knock off as well actually uh, is is a nice utility move to have on this thing. I know I've got knock off users in um, or yeah in Donphan and in Morwile, um, but knock off doesn't have to be used as an offensive move. It can be used as a utility move. Um, so knocking off things with Salazzle is going to be really easy, I think, actually, because people won't expect it. Um, so yeah, that's really nice. We've got uh, Salazzle. That's something I've wanted to use for a while. Um, next up, we have got Mesprit. I'm so glad this thing didn't get sniped from me because I couldn't afford Uxie. I want to say Uxie was a tier above Mesprit. Um, and there wasn't really any other bulky psychics that I would really want. Um outside of this looking at what was left for me because I've got to say Donphan and Slazzle were also tier 3 I believe um, so I was looking at my lower picks now um, so Mesprit is a cool dude um, you can see it's a bit bulky it synergizes really well with P2 again something that works with P2 um, I know we have got the, uh, the floor just which works with it but Mesprit's bulk 
is actually incredibly nice. 80 HP, 105 attack, defense, special attack, special defense, 80 speed. This thing's well rounded, and I think people sleep on it, to be honest. Um, its move pool is great. It gets U turn, which was really nice because it now works uh, alongside my Greninja for U turn because I don't have much of a core at the moment. Um, Obviously, it gets rocks. It's another rock user, which was another big thing I wanted because um, I didn't want to have to rely on more while using it all the time. I feel like more while's move slot could be used a bit better. Um, it does get ice beam, thunderbolt, so bolt beam again along with P2. Bolt beam is so precious in league. Um, obviously, psychic moves. Um, this thing can hit hard enough itself. It, its move pool is pretty much that of a normal type, um, and it's so flexible. You can run choice scarf. You can run trick room. Uh, this could be, I mean, this and P2 are my Trick Room setters, and they can, you know, if I'm fast and set up Trick Room, I then get a slow U-turn out. I know it uses Trick Room turn, but it lets me a free switch into my Mega Morwile, and stuff happens, like, good luck to my opponent. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what my hands are doing. Um, Mesprit's just a cool dude. It's a really flexible mon. It's a bulky psychic. Um, it's got an incredibly good move pool, and I'm really excited to use it because actually I forgot it's got Levitate as well, and um, my team was starting to look a bit ground weak. Um, I do cover that up with some things I get later on in the draft, um, but Levitate is nice because I do have more while weak to ground. I do have uh, Salazar weak to ground. Greninja ain't going to take a move very well. If it's Earthquake, Donphan could take it okay, uh, and again, if it's Earthquake and not Stab, Kyron could probably take it okay. Um, so yeah, that is uh, Mesprit. Now, looking at my team, I still need a bit more speed um, because I've only got Slazen and Greninja over 100. Everything else is sort of in the lower parts of uh, like 80. Kyrim's 95, but everything else is quite slow. So I was going to get Lycanroc Dusk, um, but that was sniped a couple of rounds earlier. So I did end up taking Lycanroc Day. Now, that's Discord. Like, you don't want to see Discord. I clicked the wrong thing. Um, Looking, oh, originally I wanted Dusk because obviously it's a bit stronger. Lycanroc Dusk gets Tough Claws and two attack more. Lycanroc obviously doesn't get Tough Claws but gets two speed more and loses two less attack than Dusk. So I thought that might be a bit of an issue, but actually looking at sort of team building so far, the extra two in speed is actually really nice. Um, I wanted it because obviously oh, I think offensive rock type is seriously underrated in league format because there's really not many things which switch into rock types other than steel and ground. Um, Lycanroc does get drill run, so it can hit steel types. Obviously, it's got its signature Z-move, which gets rid of terrains. Um, at plus two, it pretty much kills anything. Um, it gets Accelerock, which is actually incredible. Like, my week one, I looked at his team and, like, Accelerock was super effective against four of his team or something. And I was like, get this thing to plus two. That wipes half his draft out with just Accelerock. Um, obviously Stone Edge once you've used uh, Shattered Splint Storm, Storm, no, Storm Shard, Splintered Storm Shard, something like that, Storm, I don't know, um, I, I guess I should say Lycanroc is my other Zemi fuser at this point, um, but yeah, the speed and the attack on this thing is really nice, um, obviously it's not bulky, it's not made to be bulky, it does get Sand Rush, so it can kind of, um, work well against the Sand Team, I think someone has drafted Baldor and Excadrill, um, so I can run Sand Rush on it. I think it also gets Steadfast as its best ability outside of that. Um, which isn't bad, because if my opponent has Fake Out, uh, or does flinch me or something, you know, I'll be like, okay, I'll take that, 3 plus 1. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's move pool got better with move tutors for sure. Um, it's still not the most diverse, but it's big enough to be effective late game. And I've already said to you guys I wanted something for late game. Oh, and it also gives me another Stealth Rock option. Like, Probably won't bring Stealth Rocks in it that often, if at all, because um, I have got Mesprit and I have got more while. But it's fast rocks. I also think it's another far. I think all my fast ones get torn. I think this gets torn. I'm not going to check. Um, but yeah, it's just a cool mon. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll fit my playstyle because I like fast defense where I can get it, which is why I think I use Greninja really well. And that's why I also think Slazzle might fit in. So I'm a bit nervous about using Morwile because the bulky side of things isn't something I tend to use, but it's Mega Morwile, it can't be that hard to use. You can literally just click a move and it'll do a shit ton of damage to whatever is in front of you. So yeah, uh, that's Lycanroc. Next up, the penultimate mon, it was an 11 mon draft, uh, is the normal Rotom. Now, this actually fits my team really well. Um, it's another Levitator, so again, I've already mentioned that I might have a bit of a ground weakness. We do cover that up again in a bit. 
Um, I need an electric type. Um, I know Rotom isn't the strongest electric type going or the fastest, but it's really unique. Um, its move pool isn't the most diverse, but it's a ghost type as well, so it's a spin blocker, it is a defogger. It's got Will-O-Wisp, it's got Thunder Wave, it's got Toxic. I can literally do any status I want with this thing. Pain Split, it gets Screens, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, Hex, um, Signal Beam I believe. Um, I, outside of that it doesn't really have much else, but it's a cool boy. It's faster than the other Rotoms, it's a bit weaker though and obviously not as bulky. The 77-77 is kind of cool. Um, you, it can be kind of bulky, but I've never used it, and I'm feeling like it just fits the team really well, and when I can use it, it's going to be annoying, because I know sh uh, I know Jasmine loves this, nearly said it, nearly said the wrong name, um, I know Jasmine loves this thing so much, um, I just want to be able to use it really well, it's a cool mon, for tier 5, I think it's actually a bit of a steal, surprised it's tier 5 and not tier 4, but then again, I guess it doesn't compare to other tier 4 mons, there's not much else to say, I really. I, like, it's going to be Scarfed or it's going to be bulky-ish, I think, most of the time you'll see it. And, and Defog is just nice. I now have two Defoggers and one Spinner, so it's enough to deter Hazards. And I should be able to fit one of them on the team somewhere if I want to get rid of Hazards. Um, so that's Rotom. And then finally, the last one of the draft is one I wasn't ever planning on using. But when I sort of thought, okay, this is the last pick. What have I not got? I haven't got the Grass type. Um, I haven't got a bulky fireball grass core anyway, but grass is really nice because obviously it provides immunity to the powder moves and uh, Leech seed So I have actually decided to go with Chesnaw um, It provides move of ground uh, Resistance 122 defense awesome um, 75 defense isn't the worst and 88 HP is actually pretty bulky um, 107 attack so it can dish out decent damage even if you are bulky. It gets Leech Seed, Synthesis, Drain Punch, Bulk Up. I want to say it's Belly Drum. I think it might. Um, spiky Shield, great coverage moves. Um, I know it gets Poison Jab. I'm pretty sure it gets... Oh, we'll look at it. Uh, what's it get? Earthquake, Dragon Claw. Don't know why you use that unless you're a god. Uh, Leech Seed, Poison Jab, uh, Seed Bomb, Shadow, Shadow Claw, Stone Edge. Super Fang is a cool move to have. Uh, it, like another Taunter, I mean it's a slow one, uh, then Headbutt, it does get Belly Drum, I thought it got Belly Drum, um, like it's move, okay it's move forward isn't as good as I thought it was, but it's a cool Mon, um, it's a bulky Mon, it's a Mon I've, I, I've never really considered I want to use, but now I have it, I'm kind of excited to use it, um, and I think it works with my team pretty damn well. Um, so I know it wasn't like the most in-depth draft analysis ever, guys, um, but I didn't really want to make it too long, uh, too in-depth, too laboring for you to watch. I mean, it's probably quite laboring listening to me anyway, ramble on for half an hour, but that was the team for Norwich Skitty for this season. Um, I'll leave a link to the PGBL website. They don't have a spreadsheet, guys. They have a freaking website, um, which... You guys can see all the stats for the season and all the other leagues that are associated with this website. So it's, I'm in the PGBL. Couldn't, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you any of the other leagues on this website. But there's quite a few um, which you guys can follow and potentially join. And uh, you can see all the stats of what's the, like, the MVP, the killer, the mom with the most deaths. Like, you know, that type of thing. It's a really cool website, so I'd recommend you check it out. And I'll also leave a link to all the um, coaches, um, YouTube links down here. We've got some really cool uh, coaches here. We've got the freaking killer Nacho. Like, I used to watch him when it was Gen 4. Like, people recorded their games with their webcam. I am. I hope I'm playing him. I haven't actually checked my fixture list and, like, remembered it. I hope I get to play him, because that'll be, like, a little mini fangirl moment. Um, who else have we got? Um... We've got Nate in here, you two found Nate. Um, we've got Ominous Acid, who I've known for a long time in the community. I said we've got King Bub. Uh, we've got Randy, who is in the D League, who I was obviously in the D League with. Um, and a few of the other guys who I don't know as well, but I'm really looking forward to playing because I do like joining leagues with people I don't necessarily know and get to play for the, you know, because it's new. Like, yes, I'm in the PPL and I'm now going into season seven. Um, but playing the same guys it's not boring but you kind of get to know each other's play styles and, and and things like that so new opponents is always good fun um so thank you for watching this video guys make sure you do leave a like check out all the links below like i said um make sure you check out my game which is going to be if it's not live already be live very shortly i would assume um and i will see you uh well later for the first week of the pgbl
See you later.